guys, Kevin Elizabeth here. Today I am here with Melissa, who is a San Diego florist. So Melissa, tell us a little bit about your company and what we're gonna be doing today. Great, well thank you guys so much uh, for watching what I'm presenting to you today. My name is Melissa Duncanson of MD Flora. Mm -hmm. um, I offer all kinds of wedding services, but mainly um, you know, to my brides here in San Diego. I do travel up to the Bay Area, which nice. is great. That's where I'm <laughs> originally from. And then anywhere your heart desires is really kind of a new adventure for me. Cool. Today we're going to be making a bouquet. Tell us a little bit yes. about your style of bouquet because it might be different than what other brides have seen. So sure. what is your vibe? Sure. So initially when approaching bouquets, I like Mother Nature and the form of the florals themselves to okay. really lead the way. But I do call it like an organic type of shape. Okay. Um, an organic sort of heart shape almost okay, is what yeah. I refer to it as. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of helps give a, a visual to my bride mm -hmm. really very yeah, simply. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Um, and then that way when they're having an idea of where they're holding it to, they can kind of have a visual of what that looks like. Um, cool. And then in terms of the style, it's very more, more airy. I like, you know, each each bloom to have their room to shine. The color palettes, this one in particular is pretty monochromatic with an extra little pop of something special okay. to give some depth. Um, and I like to add textural varieties that are pulled directly from yeah. the what floral. What are these guys themselves. called? These are two roses. Okay. Um, these are local. Hmm. So what I selected these in particular um, just because I saw this really beautiful sort of beigey taupe. Yeah, they're cool. Pulling here. So mm -hmm. that's just helping me make decisions as okay. well in choosing Perfect. products. So with the bridal bouquet, what is the first thing you're going to do <laughs> to get the process started? Yes. Well, basically what I'll do is I'll just take bits and pieces of everything I've put here. Okay. Um, I'll process them just a little bit more to see, and then I'm just gonna start with the base structure and work out. Okay. Um, and then just kind of go from there and see kind of what the yeah. material is gonna let happen. Okay. Um, I really don't come into the design with an idea of really what it needs to look like. Okay. I just know I need it to be gorgeous and include okay. these things. <laughs> There's not like error that's gonna come in. You just kind of are playing and then adjusting as you go. Sure. So maybe that will make people feel like they can just go ahead and start and yes. if they're not liking it, they that's can adjust. That's the hardest part is yeah. starting. <laughs> um, I also am not afraid to edit myself afterwards either. Okay. A lot of times, um, you guys don't see off camera, I'm using a mirror to work in, which is a really important um, tool mm -hmm. that I use to even be able to tell what things look like in front of me because mm -hmm. looking at them here has no yeah, it's different. help for you sure. as a photographer, the client, all that. Um, so I use that and then if something's looking flat or really dark or really light or too far out here, I'm able to see that and we'll edit. All right, so you're just kind of grabbing a couple different mm -hmm. pieces of things. And then as we go, I guess for some of the brides who don't know what things are called, sure. um, I would love, even if it seems like really obvious, like a rose. Yeah, so this rose in particular, um, you know, it was, Pretty, it's hard to find sometimes, but you know, I so told myself if it's at the market, uh -huh. her name is Toffee. She's okay. a Toffee Rose, so a cool. lot of times roses will take on like dessert flavors or okay. <laughs> named after somebody, uh, but this one is just delicious. As so many different layers, this happened to be at the market, so that's okay. kind of where I started mm -hmm. um, for the rose. Um, and then these are some butterfly ranunculus, these okay. two guys, local tube roses and some clover. All of the dried goods are foraged locally, mm -hmm. um, and then sun bleach. I wasn't planning on including these. These are quite old, actually. Yeah. Um, so I was, might not even use those. They're but. fun. They kind of remind me of giant honeysuckles. Exactly. <laughs> well, and it started turning that little brownish, uh -huh. which made it make a little yeah. bit more sense for this. Um, cool. So went there. And then these guys are um, Noggy Greenery. This actually is a bright, super Kelly, like, forest green almost. Okay. Um, and I've sun bleached it for, like, a month and a half. Huh. Um, directly in the sun and rotating them all to get this color. Oftentimes this toffee rose I want, but it's either not available or way too expensive. For a normal bridal bouquet, like what kind of quantity are you typically buying in? Typically, yeah, I'll basically get about 10 stems of mm -hmm. each variety, basically one okay. bunch of each variety that I'm dreaming about. A lot of times I don't even really know like how like the dried will respond because sometimes they're really strong, okay. sometimes they'll break apart like crazy. So hmm. again, I've taught myself to go with the flow okay. when it comes to working with this type of material. Mm -hmm. And so now you've basically just got this cluster you're holding and you're just adding to it, mm -hmm. arranging things. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of going in a spiral um, okay. type of direction. Mm -hmm. um, it gives support and it gives me the ability to go ahead and let these uh, flyers kind of have okay. some support yeah. versus just be, like falling. Falling down. Okay. Falling down. Yeah. Nice. 
There's typically like a, a you know a feature flower that I would maybe say these guys are our feature um, okay. since they're a little bit larger, mm -hmm. a little bit more detailed. I'll probably okay. put a few more of them. Um, these are also a beautiful feature. I like to think of um, yeah. the the accents is a really nice feature too. The ones that kind of float out. Sure. And then you know sometimes you know I'm not loving the texture down below. I'm really looking at the top. Okay. You know so if I'm really just needing some highlight like say if I'm feeling okay. again if this is dark and I need some bright uh -huh. I'll use her even okay. if I'm not needing her like okay for you know a stronger purpose it's okay. helping Just, like, down supporting. here mm -hmm. gotcha so you're kind of trimming a little bit once you mm -hmm. feel like it's unmanageable yeah yeah okay. kind of start in that little shape and then kind of reach these guys out. wedding day are you wanting typically to get your flowers ordered and have them in your studio typically before the wedding day I'll place my order anywhere between two to four weeks prior okay depending on how special like for mm -hmm. instance for these if I the really roses. wanted these mm -hmm. yeah I would definitely put those in and then when are you picking them up to bring oh, them yes. here and then the week of you have a Saturday wedding depending on what the varieties look like and how much care they really need it mm -hmm. changes for instance I'll pick up roses on a Wednesday because they need more warmth and a little okay. bit more attention and a little bit more processing whereas you know maybe these guys who are a little bit more delicate I want them in the cooler for a little longer. Okay. So back to the bouquet what what are you thinking right now and what like is your process turning into at this point? Yeah, so now I'm really, I'm seeing where, you know, I would need to fill in, kind of liking where this shape is going. I'm feeling like I need some more attention here. I'm also looking okay. at the depth to mm -hmm. see if my brights are where I like them, if I want to sprinkle more right. throughout because um, I have to decide kind of that now and pop them back through so they have that support that they need. And then a few more supports and then we should be okay. Cool. cool. In bouquets, I love dimension and I love texture and I love color, but your bouquet is going to have some sound to it as well. Thank you for noticing that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think that that's fun too. I like to um, have a sensory experience for uh -huh. my brides and I like to include, you know, if they you know, really enjoy like a rosemary or a lavender uh -huh. or something like that, you know, I'll make sure that it's close to their boutonniere okay. or close on their personals so they can mm -hmm. have that sensory experience. Sure. definitely getting there. I might need a friend over here, maybe just a little dried, just to give me some reach drama. So I'm definitely looking at directional movement and how our eye is traveling through this, this little piece. So right now, you know, we're really, where are we starting? We're kind of starting like here and then jumping to our brights, I okay. feel like. Um, so I do feel like I'm, I'm here. You know, I'm trying to make sure I'm going all the way back around and connecting back to my focal point, which okay. is kind of, I feel like over here, being that I have a little bit of dried. So if I get to a spot and I'm feeling like I, I get stuck, okay. that's where I kind of pop in a few little more right. additions. Like for instance, I'm feeling like it's a little too stark white over here. We have here and then Yes, so instead of ending on white, you're gonna bring it back yeah. into the... 
bring it back tones. into that okay. tone, but I also want to put in some more um, of our brights. As you're going through, mm -hmm. you're taping a little bit more. Yes. Um, that just kind of helps keep it together and maybe you don't have to strain your hand so much. Yes. Is that a benefit? Okay. Yes, definitely. Okay, so. so your thumb is there. So yeah, so that's where my main strength is. Um, okay. A lot of times people get stuck on this part, like how do I let go? So just keep your strength right here and keep your hand on the other side and then just let your thumb go and then like you're almost threading it through, bring your tape back through, lift your thumb up and put it on in there. Gotcha. Instead of feeling like you have to let go because you really don't and then just come up use the weight against it and just bring it around. And then that way you can kind of tidy up a little okay. bit later, but it just gives you that just like grab. So you're kind of also trimming your stems as yes. you go yes. off the bottom. Um, I've talked about stems in my flower videos before, and I personally think that there's a difference between long stems being intentional yes. and long stems just not being looked at as part of the design and they Correct. shouldn't really be there. I'm a Thank fan of shorter that. stems mm -hmm. because I've had some bouquets where the stems were far too long and it wasn't supposed to be part of like some ethereal design mm -hmm. where the stems were all I could focus on and so I've had to go in and cut sometimes Have you, yes. and because otherwise they're poking the bride in the stomach, they're Logistics. far too long, yeah. they're longer than the bouquet is and it's just way too much. So right now, I'm looking at this guy and I'm seeing too like an like too much of an implied line right here, like okay. pop, 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 pop right. of this yellow. Okay. So my my feelings aren't hurt if I come back and take her out. Yeah. I think I'm done here. So you're gonna tape now. About how many times are you gonna go around? This I will probably do. Let's count. Probably about five times, and then I'll just kind of start moving the tape together so it okay. doesn't have any sort of messiness, you know. And then I, what I tell my brides too when I hand it off and I, I hold it, you know, I'm mm -hmm. them. I go, okay, right. and I demo. I go, this is it. Find your belly button, do the thing, and okay. then I, I go, this, not the pretty part. No, definitely. This, not. the pretty part. Yes. You know, and it's just that simple. Like as soon as you <laughs> and I have them do that, the motion. I also love this method. I will have my the brides. Cuddle. Yeah, Ooh. like. It's I just good. say, honey, cradle in your arm. Don't worry about the hand being weird. You mm -mm. won't see it. And it's just a gorgeous shot. And, and then your hair yeah. is all here. And then your dress is here. One thing I want to note is I typically won't do this if I have a really tight ball shaped because then it just looks strange. It does. You need to have some sort of like Because this is trail. like an organic, like rectangular right. type of you Yeah. Know, and so space. that flows off the arm nicely as if the bride just bundled up a bunch of flowers and is holding them, carrying them somewhere. So mm -hmm. that's why I think that this is so versatile because you can hold it the more standard hold, you can do this, like you can just hold it different ways mm -hmm. and I think it looks really lovely mm -hmm. having that variety. And then ribbon wise, mm -hmm. so there's just m like more of a basic ribbon cover and yes. then there's the trailing ribbons. Yes. Yeah, so you can um, just have like one and I'll grab, I'll grab the ones that I have. Um, okay. Something, you know, just holds very utilitarian. Okay. You don't even cover see, your tape. Which is, yeah, cover your tape, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, which is really nice. Um, or you can have like a nice trailing big one. Okay. Um, I've done some, I did fringe recently, which was mm -hmm. really oh, fun cool. because it's spun and she had fringe on her oh, awesome. thing. So it really kind of lent to that. Mm -hmm. To go ahead and put the, the ribbon on. Um, so I'll just lay it over like that. So at about right here, um, I'll pin it instead of tying it just to give it a little strength so I can tie it. And this is actually the any part, doesn't really matter where. Um, my pin will go like up and in. You don't really want to go in directly just in case you happen to get a spot. You'll go ahead and get your bridal's hand. That's not fun. And I'll go ahead and kind of camouflage that, that friend. So I'm going to go with him here and then I'll just come back to the back or the front wherever you kind of ended with your pin. Kind of like with the tape. I tend to like the longer, so I feel like this one looks kind of nice. We have some, you know, kind of more wild features, so adding the ribbon at different different lengths is really nice because that'll um, give you some tapered sort of shots. Maybe hopefully the wind will get it and mm -hmm. some photos or some video. And then I'll come back again and kind of look at where the distance is between um, the ribbon and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And it really is enough stem for your hand to hold it. Also to finish it, I use two pins and I probably wouldn't use such an obnoxious um, contrast in color. Mm -hmm. um, but just for the sake of the video, I wanted to be able to show that there's two there. Bouquet is made, ribbons yes. are on. Yes. And we've already gone over the different ways to hold it. Mm -hmm. So you could cradle it. Again, this I think works better with a more organic shape. And then your standard shape and keeping your thumb on the pins which mm -hmm. is really nice. And then what I like to do when it comes to the bridal party, 
I like to make sure that they're, it's like all around belly button, but slightly mm-hmm. different heights because just one straight across line looks a little bit weird. Mm-hmm. So just a variety of heights. Any final tips that you have for making a bouquet or just something that you want to say about the art of creating one? Yeah, I would say have patience with yourself when okay. you're teaching yourself how to do it. Edit yourself too. Really take some photos. Okay. Um, I'm instituted a practice of, you know, having myself like take photos Mm -hmm. of what I look like holding it. It just really sets my mind at ease of what things might look like. Play with depth and don't be afraid to let things hang out and let things feel like they're Mm -hmm. really far away because they're really not. Trust yourself, trust your initial instinct. Tell me in case anybody wants to hire you again, what areas you service and what your current minimums are and where people can find you. I'm servicing San Diego, um, Southern California, Northern California as well. And I'll be so willing to travel maybe for like your average like 125 to 150 okay. wedding, like for the guests in terms, mm-hmm. my minimum will be about like 45 okay. to five grand net right now. You can find me, most of my work I'm posting on Instagram okay. um, at mdflora.co. Alrighty, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you were curious about how a bouquet gets made or if you want to make your own, and I'm sure Melissa would be more than happy to answer questions. Yes. If you have any specific for her, cause I'm not a florist, I just know it looks pretty. Um, but thanks so much for being on here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so much you guys are amazing um i really appreciate you taking the time if you're still here watching this and supporting um kevin's channel this is amazing so thank you so much all right well i will see you guys next time bye